Hey friends, in this video, I want to tell you everything about how you can calculate a percentage of the total in your matrix or any other visual. I will delve into things like using all remove filters, all selected, and some other methods in which you can do this. Follow along and you'll know how to do it in a bit. On the screen right now, I have a table that contains class names and product names. So a product can be, for example, in the regular class or in the economy class. And right there, I filtered on all the colors, uh, all the products that have the color Azure. And we, I have selected two different dates. From these, it would be interesting to have a look if we can calculate what the percentage of the total is. So the first thing we could try is see if we can add a percentage right here that shows the, let's see. So for example, for all of these products, I want to state those products as a percentage of this value here. And for the next section, I want to say that these products are stated as a percentage of this number here. Let's see how we can do that. So I'm going to copy this visual first. So it's very clear what's happening. Then we're going to create a new measure. I have one open I'm seeing here. Okay, so let's, let's say that we're going to start out with simply the sales measure, and we're going to use some variables. So variable sales equals sales. And then we will return the sales variable. I'm just writing it down like this. So we can easily see it step by step how we build up to the solution. So at this point, these two matrices are identical because it's both returning the sales. Okay, so what can we do if we want to calculate each of these numbers as a percentage of its class? So in DAX, there's always two steps for this. First, there is a step where you need to make sure you ignore the filters on a product. And the second step is that you divide the regular sales measure by the, by the sales measure that ignores the products. So the first step for this is we're going to create another variable which is the sales ignore product. And for that, we're going to use the calculate function because calculate allows you to change the filter context. So we write calculate. We're going to still use the sales measure. I could make this a little bit bigger. We're going to calculate sales. And on the next line, as you can see in the rows right here, I have, uh, I have two values from the product table. One is called class name, one is called product name. If we want to return the total of the class, we need to ignore the product names here. And the first way to do that is to use the function called remove filters. And remove filters allows you to input, for example, product name, which is the, the lowest level in my column. And then if I close my brackets and I can return the sales ignore product, then all my measure will now return is simply this part here. So this part is called the sales ignore product and it will be returned right there. So the first variable, nothing is done with it. Let's see what happens. Uh, let's see. So the old measure is still in here and we will replace it by the new measure. Let me make it a little bit bigger. And let's call this one sales feed two for now. Oh, uh, let's see. Let's see. So on the left, we had a visual that shows the subtotal of 31. And on the right, you can see this 31 being repeated for each of those products. This is interesting. So why are there more values on the right compared to, to the left? When we look at these values, this value here is the first value that has uh, a seal for the product color Azure and this product name. And if we look over here, you find it out there. So what makes it that we also see these values right here? Uh, let's see, we'll put the arrow here and this arrow. Let me explain that. So what's happening in this uh, matrix here is this matrix first filters everything, uh, all the products for the, the class name regular, and it only returns the products that are called uh, colored Azure. Now here comes the difference. In the left matrix, only the products are returned that have a seal within that context. 
So only the products that have a seal for Azure with a regular class name within the date filters that we have. On the right, we tell it to ignore all the products. So what's happening again is the call, all the products with Azure and the regular class name are returned, but then it ignores all the filters in the product and it simply looks for all of the products with a regular class or with an Azure color name. And because of that, even the items that don't have any sales are returned. So that's the reason why everything is here. But this is not gonna cause any issues because let's go to the following step. If we then divide all of these items, we could divide four by 31, five by 31, and the divide function automatically hides values that are uh, divided by zero because division by zero returns into an error. So we go back to our measure and with one more variable, we could say the variable results is the division of my sales divided by the sales ignore product. And then we can return our result right here. We'll just have to format this as a percentage. And in that way, we have our first result. So the percentages here are, uh, are shown as a percentage of the total of the class they are in. So economy has a single product, which is 100% of the class and deluxe has two products and you can see the percentages right there. Let's go to a next step. So if we go back into this measure, instead of taking the sales ignore product in this way, let's imagine we want to calculate a percentage of the absolute total, the absolute total, which could be 50. Remove filters is actually a syntax that has been introduced later and it's a, an easier way of saying all. So you could also use the all function because all either removes filters or it returns you a list with all the values in that list. But in this case, it also removes filters. So what we could do is we could say sales uh, total and the sales total would be the, the all of the product name and you can then actually add another product, which is the product class name. Sales total. Let's first see what this part of our measure, so the part right here, what the result of that is. So we know the first step that is being calculated. So we can return right here, the sales total, which references step number three. So our measure, I will just shortly format it back to a whole number so we can at least see it. Okay. On the right, the matrix now shows the number 50, which is the same number as we had earlier, which is this number right here, this 50. So in each of these lines, what the formula is now doing, it's saying like, okay, I'm gonna create my filter context before I calculate my expression, the total sales. And by altering the context, it's saying like on each of these lines, it will ignore the class name and it will ignore the product name. And by doing that, you always get to the subtotal. And by having this total, if you divide each of the items on the left here with a regular sales measure, by the total, you will also get the percentage that you need. So the last step would then be to again, divide the sales by the sales total. So if we return the result right here and put everything as a percentage, just like earlier, you now see that the, calculated, the calculation is different because it will show you uh, a percentage of the total right here. So the class name is stated as a percentage of the total and the percentages within the class are also stated as a percentage of the very total. So these little percentages here, they don't add up to 100% for within the class. That's what we needed the other measure for. We're going to add another dimension to this. We're going to the third method. Let's say that we're also looking at the year. The year number can be in the columns. And now all of a sudden, we have three columns here. So we have some number for 2008 and 2009. Uh, let's make this one a little bit smaller. And these two, 
and put the year column in here. And now we're going to go back to our measure that we had earlier. And let's go back to the sales total, which is our second variable. And then we make it a whole number just for comparison. So in this case, we find that uh, the total, the totals that we're looking at always reference the total within that year, because the only filters we have removed up to now are the filters on product class and product name. But perhaps you're more curious to state everything as a percentage of the very total. Now, another way to do it is to use something like all selected. By using all selected, you can go to a certain um, let's see, so we can go here. By using all selected and by not inputting everything, it will look at your current evaluation context in your matrix and it will try to respect all the, all the filters that have been done, but return you the total. So if we return this with all selected, then in your matrix on the right, you can now see that each year, and each value within this matrix returns the very total of the matrix. So the 50 is the 50 that is down there. And by using this 50 again, we can easily uh, state everything as a percentage of the sales total by now clicking on the result and getting things back to a regular percentage. So what we can tell is that uh, everything in our matrix is stated as a percentage of this 50. These two numbers are in total 100%. If we look at this 27, 21 and 63, that's a 100%. And then also these values, these, uh, this one and let's see, this one. Also, all the detailed levels also add up to a very total. And these are some different ways in, of course, which you can adjust your filter context. I'm curious what you struggle with. So let me know what, what examples you would like covered and where you struggle with. Which of the formulas you prefer? Are you using remove filters? All Do you use all selected at all? And in which ways do you actually bump into challenges here? By delving into these different ways, you just get different features on uh, how, how, to, uh, how to calculate things. So if we, for example, take that all selected and focus on it, the great advantage is that if you ever have a visual that includes a new column, it will automatically be included because all selected did not take any parameters that we had over here. Whereas earlier, we had an all filter, which had two different column names hard coded in there. So if ever a new column would be added, you would have to add it manually too. Sometimes this is the wish behavior and sometimes it isn't. So just make sure you focus on what helps your case best and just apply that to the model. Hopefully this added value, smash the like button if you liked it. I release more of these kind of videos almost on a weekly basis. So look out for them and make sure uh, you have to check it out next time. I'll see you.